Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Dr. Music Podcast, where today, sitting in with me, is Devin Allman. Uh, Devin is, of course, the son of legendary Greg uh, Greg Allman of the Allman Brothers Band. Devin, along with Dickie Betts' son, Dwayne Betts, are leading the Allman Betts Band and carrying on the legacy that their fathers created. Devin, Dwayne, and the other members of the Allman Betts Band are getting ready to hit the road on an ambitious American tour that kicks off on May 16th in Charleston, South Carolina, one of my favorite places on the planet, and runs through June 9th. Uh, Devin, absolutely wonderful to have you thank you so much for stopping in oh man thank you for having me and uh yeah we're really we're we're getting geeked for uh, our first you know real kind of you know it's it's really a reunion tour we haven't really um performed an almond bets band show we did a couple last year to kind of you know feel it out um but yeah once we announced that hiatus in 22 um at the at the top of 22 you know we i don't think we were really sure how long it would last you know if it'd be like hey let's just take a year off and back away from this for a little bit because we had ran it so hard um or if it would be five years so it's it's nice to know that it was just a couple years and um you know to be able to get out there and celebrate these couple of records uh down to the river and bless your heart and be playing with Dwayne again will be uh it'll be a lot of fun for a few weeks it'll be fun for all of us uh <laughs> this is uh this is a spectacular band um you know you guys really you put it together in in the spirit of the legacy that you know your father's created and uh you know we we miss that we love that sound we love that whole family thing and you guys are you do that uh it's like having having the old band back uh and you do it so well and you honor that so well it's uh we appreciate you that's really sweet and kind and you know we you know, it's tough when you when you put a band together with an almond and a bets, you know. Um <laughs> you know, but ultimately like our love for for music in general is really what made it organic and made it sincere. It wasn't just like, you know, you sit in a room and say, Well, what kinds of songs would our dads write? It, you know, because they've already written them, right. you know. But you know we we have a, a very uh strong affinity for some classic rock like you know Skinner or the Almond Brothers you know or, or those are the obvious but I mean you've got like Clapton and 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 Cream and Hendrix and the Stones were a huge influence for Almond Betts band writing. Um, Wayne and I were definitely in Stones phases, so it's nice to know um, that the fans of the Almond Brothers band um can kind of play us along with some clapton and some stones and kind of put us in that yeah in that category and that's that's an honor so yeah and it really uh you you it's it's progressed that's what's great that's what you guys do is is you take that legacy and that sound and you move it into your own future you know it it, it progressed to your influences into that music and, and it's a really uh it, it's really a special thing it really is uh it, it it you know brings all of that together for us it's, it's pretty great uh you know and it's got to be difficult having that last name um you know and the bet's last name um you you can't just play like the guy down the street you know what i mean uh you, you know you have to you have to make every note count uh because you're an almond uh yeah, have you ever it's, it's an unfair pressure uh you know, <laughs> i mean you you um, can't just be good you have to be spectacular every single time out uh do you feel that pressure uh, you know, but spectacular is such a subjective term because, you know, one guy might see a guitar player and go, he's unbelievable. And the other guy might see the, a guitar player and go, eh, doesn't really move me. You know what I mean? So yeah. spectacular is a very subjective word. Um, however, I think you hit on something when, when you said something like you got to make every note count. That ethos is something 
that thank God is kind of in me anyway, you know, so that just helps the fact that I'm an almond. Cause you know, I, I do like to play like, like the place could burn down any second. And this is the last time you ever get to play, you know, kind of thing yeah. like, um, and that can actually be to my detriment too, because sometimes I don't just take that breath and slow down and, and, and paint the air right. with the notes, paint the air with the notes but then, you know, you got to deliver some, in my eyes, some intensity because good art is tension and release, tension and release, tension and release. Mm -hmm. So um, I feel really fortunate that just, you know, and maybe part of it is in my DNA, but a, just a big part of who I am is tension and release and making everything count. So if that if that lends itself to the almond lore, um, <laughs> then I'm 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 really lucky yeah, yeah. <laughs> that I that I happen to be kind of built that way. Um yeah. and then you wonder if you're built that way because of said almond lore. I don't <laughs> right. know. Right. I, I don't know. All I know is um every time I pick up a guitar, I try and and take it somewhere. And uh, you know, there's a million guys better than me. Um and I just try and inject what I'm feeling into it and, and try to get better every time and, and try to take some chances here or there. So it, wor it works for me and it works for a lot of other people. I know that for sure. Uh, yeah, I know, I know it works for Frank Hannon. I just had Frank Hannon on. Well, he's a regular here. Oh, but, man, uh, I love Frank. Frank's great. And he comes on with a, with an almond bet shirt. Now we had a whole conversation. Oh, it's so great. It was great. Yeah, it was uh, great. Uh, I love, you know, it's wild because of that whole, you know, cause for those that don't know, Dickie's daughter is married to Frank Hannon. So Frank and Dwayne are are, are brother-in-laws. Okay, I did not know that myself. Yeah, awesome. yeah, awesome. So so yeah, Frank Hannon of Tesla is married to Dickie Betts's daughter, which makes Frank Hannon of Tesla and Dwayne Betts brothers-in-law, which is wild. It because is wild. when I was a kid, when I was a kid, I was a Tesla fan. Yeah. You know, so now it's like I'm on stage jamming with Frank, going, "Wow, what you know? This is this is some full circle shit." You know, and I told <laughs> right. him, I'm like. I'm a junior in high school with my little cassette Walkman laying out in the sun, trying to <laughs> trying to get a little suntan so the girls would like you, you know. <laughs> and I remember listening to the great radio controversy, the second Tesla record, over and over and over. Absolutely. And while all these bands were busying themselves with makeup and you know and spandex, which you know, hey, whatever floats your boat. Right. Uh, but they were they were like playing some intricate guitar solos, and that's singer was like stepping toe to toe with like steve tyler yep. and that band is uh is special so i didn't mean to go on a tesla tangent but yeah no uh, I, well always I welcome here <laughs> <laughs> frank is such a sweetheart yeah. and such a monster player we've had him on the almond family almond bets family revival a couple times and wow yeah yeah he's great he's great and uh you know on that revival you have you know kenny wayne shepherd and uh you know eric gales and joanne shaw taylor uh these are all you know people that have been on the show and and wonderful people first of all uh and you know just amazing players uh and, and it's great to have them as part of that yeah. family thing uh it's really cool <laughs> Um, yeah, I should add that the band is doing five dates in Australia <laughs> at the end of this month, right? Yeah. Uh, New Orleans Jazz Festival, uh, in April. Uh, you know, in 2022, you yeah. and Donovan Frankenreiter, uh, <laughs> set the world record playing 50. 23. No, just a few months ago. Was it 50 shows across 50 <laughs> states in 49 days. Yeah. That's a new level of insane right there. Uh, <laughs> you like the road, no doubt, right? Does uh, Everything else is easy now, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I kind of, I can never really complain about a tour ever again. Because uh, <laughs> that's a whole new level. Um, wow. That's crazy. Yeah, it was, so it was just last summer. Um, and you know i don't know 10 10 years ago i had this idea i wonder if everybody if, if anyone has played all 50 u.s states consecutively night after night after night after night no nights off 50 shows 
50 states in 50 days. I wonder if it had ever been done. Right. And this idea was like 10 years ago. I put that idea on the shelf. <laughs> and uh, I guess I must have been around 40 when I thought of the idea because uh, we were, my, my wife threw me this incredible 50th uh, surprise party. And, uh, and people flew in from all over the country and they made like these videos, like all my friends, all these musicians. And it was really sweet. And, uh, I don't know. We were like listening to vinyl records. The the party was at a vinyl record, like bar. And my wife ran the whole thing out. There was like a hundred people there, open bar, which is trouble. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so funny thing is my agent had flown in my agent of 10 years. Um, who books me all over the world and my manager of 14 years, you know, and libations were had, you know, we, we're a couple whiskeys in and the idea came back and I'm like, Wait, <laughs> I'm 50. This is the time to do it is while I'm 50. Yeah. Cause I had just, I had just turned it that day. So I, I pulled my manager and my agent. I said, let's go outside. I want to, I want to spring an idea on you. And, uh, I said, well, what do you guys think if we did 50 shows in all 50 states in 50 days? And he started <laughs> laughing, like, you are crazy. And I go, yeah, but how much fun would that be? You know, like, get me the whole country, boom, in less than two months. And Same. my agent's like, my agent's like, I like it. That's going to be fun. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. I think we got back into the, we got back into the offices on Monday or Tuesday or something. And, and we got on our normal weekly Zoom call, and I think my manager was like, you know, it has been done. And I go, shit. <laughs> was it? And I think it was three <laughs> artists that have done it. One of them was George Thorogood. Okay, wow. And, and so I go, well, that means we got to do it in 49 days to beat the record. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they uh, they put it together, and sure as shit, we went out. And we did all 50 states in 49 days, which means we did, uh, there's one day where we did two shows in one day. No big deal. We've done that before. <laughs> but consecutive, no nights off, the bus rolls, the bus rolls, the bus rolls, you know. And I think some people didn't really understand the logistics of that. Yeah. You know, maybe they were like on some private jet sometime or like what it was all on a bus. Oh. We had to fly to alaska you have to right and had to i had to fly to uh uh hawaii yeah and uh but the wildest thing is we set the record i've got the uh the, the plaque up here <laughs> that, uh, that, like, like gibson guitars presented us with this plaque ah uh, how cool man that's great <laughs> that's pretty that's wild awesome um, the craziest thing was um no one got sick. No one got hurt. Yeah. Me, me and Donovan doing the singing, we never lost our voices. And the bus didn't break down. And buses break down a little more often than people yep. know. So didn't get sick, didn't get hurt, didn't lose our voice, didn't have the bus break down. The day after the final show, the bus, uh, no, the day after the final show, so day 50 or 51, the bass player got COVID, like, bad. Ooh. Two, one more day after that, the bus broke down heading back east somewhere in New Mexico or something. And not only did it break down, it had to stay parked for four days to wait for this weird part. Oh. And that if that would have happened while we were on tour, it would have blown the whole thing. Yep. So it's really fun. And, you know, it, it, it was all about fun. It was all about, like, us laughing when we were talking about it. So it was never about, oh, ego or, like, posturing. Right. We we want somebody to go beat it. Yeah. Like, yeah. We, we, will, we will be the first ones to cheer them on. Like, go beat this record. Um, go ahead. And good luck, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, no doubt. You know, the, like I say, all those things have to be clicking in the right direction, man. That That is. Yeah. Oh, that's close to and, impossible. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. And the cool thing is, and I won't divulge too much, um, but you, know, you could probably surmise what uh, this entails. Uh, we filmed the whole thing. Oh, 
Oh, that's beautiful. So, that's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, the entire thing. So uh, something might be uh, around the corner. Yeah, uh, that's cool. That is way yeah. cool. Uh, that's fantastic. Looking forward to something like that. That would be great. Heck yeah. That'd uh, be fun. Very cool. Now, you, you mentioned your wife. Let me get this straight. Uh, Coltrane, uh, sing, a string court. Quartet uh, playing French music. There he is uh, with the black flag logo and like thing. Ah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, a band led by JD Simo, uh, DJ, a mariachi band, a taco truck. Uh, <laughs> that's a wedding celebration right there. <laughs> Man. Uh, oh, yeah. Crazy. You're, you're My wife, wife uh, she My does wife, it up. Yeah, my wife knocked it out of the park. I, I told her after that, I was like, why don't why don't you plan the the revival tours from here on out? <laughs> no, um, she, uh, yeah, man. I tell you what, she's she's a rock star in her own right. You know, she's a doctor. Uh, she owns her own practice. She uh, she was a Rams NFL cheerleader. Um, I definitely hit the jackpot. Um, she's she's just an incredible person. And, um, yeah, she kind of got free reign, you know, for the wedding and it was, it was pretty crazy. Uh, it was great to have JD Simo jam and like Jimmy Hall got up and sang and Maggie Rose and, and I wasn't going to play. I was just like, I just want to see all my friends and, and yeah. dance, you know? And, uh, uh, and my wife made me play at the end. It was funny. <laughs> and so I played a little and then, uh, she didn't know, but I had like a, a mariachi band, uh, taco truck fire like she knew about that the the fireworks at the end were crazy cool. um it was an incredible night man really yeah. really incredible night it sounds like it now it, tell me you know a great relationship and marriage like that does it make going on tour easier or more difficult it's tough man it's always it's really hard you know because yeah. Now that I'm 51, which is, you know, unbelievable to even hear myself say it, because I, I really feel 30, you know, I've, uh, right. I've you know, mentally, uh, physically, I feel great. I've, you know, I've been working, uh, just working on myself, working, you know, working out and, you know, staying in motion. Like yeah. when I'm in motion, things are great. Um, so the older I get, though, the more I fall in love with home and the sanctity of home and the peace that it brings. And I've, I've, I'm wrapping up three months off, which I haven't really had since COVID. And during COVID, I went ahead and did live concerts out of my guitar room to help raise money for our band and crew to keep them in paychecks. So I really wasn't off off. And then I recorded an instrumental record uh, during that time. And I, like, I stayed super busy. So this was like three months where like, I'm working in the garage, you know, I'm like doing normal dude shit and it feels so nice. And I told my wife the other night, I said, you know, this is the first time in 25 years where I didn't feel like home was a waiting room for the next tour. Yeah. See, that's because that's typically what it's been like. I'm in a waiting room, you know, I'm going to do my laundry. I'm going to hit my favorite restaurant. I might see a friend or a family member or two, and then boom, I'm off again. Yeah. And it's been that way for 25 years. So to have three months has been like, and it made me kind of rethink. And I'm like, I think I'm going to do this every year, you know, like after Christmas, nothing for three months. Yeah. Um, next year I did book a cruise with all my bets band. Um, and that one's going to be fun. And it's more low key, you know, it's not work. It's, it's a cruise, you know? Right. Um, but yeah, man, married life. Um, it's, it's tough to be away from her and home and my pup and, you know, and my son, even though my son's an adult, like we still hang out. Like, you know, we went and saw Dune yesterday. Cool. He's wrapping up college. He's, you know, going to be diving into the real world. Um, yeah. The road is hard. The, I, I don't think people, you know, I think some people get it, but I think most people think that it's, um, 
all extravagant and fabulous and sexy and romantic and and the wanderlust and and you know you're playing in paris and you you know we're playing this year this year we're playing in in sydney and 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 tokyo and you know some really awesome um stuff on the on the on the tour horizon but you give up quality sleep which is so important yeah. you know and that sanctity of home and family and your bed, being able to wake up and, you know, just like being able to drive your own car, being able to make food. So not sitting here with a laundry list of complaints of touring, just saying it's, it's a different life, man. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, not, it for, is. it's not for the faint of heart, you know? And it's funny because a lot of us musicians just want to make some eggs in the morning and drive our car down and get a coffee <laughs> um and sleep in our own bed and then you know a lot of nine to five folks are like oh my god i would give anything right. to be, be going country to country to country and that kind of just comes back to you know every earthling's curse you have it hot you want it cold you got it right. cold you want to you know and yeah. i think the so that's just a steady dynamic that's always gonna <laughs> yeah oh yeah yeah definitely um tell me one uh, big question i i listen to the music man and and it's just got it's got that sound you know um did you research like the specifics of what was done uh with the almond brothers band you know uh settings and uh pedals uh things like that you know was that something that you really concentrated to to get that sound a little bit mm. good very good question um no never studied any of that wouldn't really know where to start. Like, who do you call the engineer that's probably already passed away or the roadies that have been, you know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. That would be hard, specific information to get. Um, what we do uh, or what we did for Down to the River and Bless Your Heart, though, was we did go to Muscle Shoals, which is a very, um, you know, it's a small room, man. It's, it's like maybe the size of my office here, which is like, I don't know, yeah. 50 by 20, you know, like something like that. Yeah. And uh, you know, old gear, old board, old mics. Um, and then as guitar players like Dwayne and Johnny and I, you know, we play old Gibsons through old, uh, you know, Fender Super Reverbs. So yeah. like... Um, I've got two 1966 Fender Reverbs, and I know Dwayne has a couple, and Johnny has a couple. So literally that mid-60s super reverb sound where you push the hell out of it. Like Derek Trucks, you know, all those, yep. you know. Um, and then when you get a real deal, like 50s or 60s, Gibson through those. And maybe a little pedal, something kind of clon, kind just to just to drive it, a king of tone, something like that. Right. Uh, that kind of does it for guitar, but you know, I really give it up to our engineer and our producer um, for "Bless Your Heart" and uh, "Down to the River." Matt Ross Spang, you know, he he really used the the older uh, mics, mic techniques. You know, that old room of, of Muscle Shoals. We made both records at Muscle Shoals. Um, <clears throat> fascinating part about that uh, recording process was. On the back of your records, you used to see um, three letters. And <clears throat> as the digital world came in and CDs came out, you probably remember at the most from CDs, you would see AAD, right. which meant it was recorded analog. It was mixed down to analog tape, and then it was transferred to digital realm to a, to a CD. So it was AAD. As time marched on into the 90s, early 2000s, obviously, uh, a lot, most recordings were DDD, right. recorded digital, mixed digital, transferred digital. Those two albums we did at Muscle Shoals <clears throat> are like they were pre CD, <clears throat> pre 1983, four, where it's AAA. Yeah. And wow. they, they, were, they were recorded analog, they were mixed analog to tape, and they were mastered analog straight on onto vinyl. Wow. So, you know, like, so if you pick up an original copy of Eat a Peach, we'll just use, you know, All the Brothers Eat a Peach. Right. The original pressing of that is recorded analog, mixed analog, transferred to analog, AAA. Yeah. If you go on Amazon and you buy Eat a Peach, it's a good chance it's actually like, like ADA. 
Okay. Like it's recorded analog and mixed analog, but it's been transferred to digital to make a bunch of copies of the new vinyls. Right, right. So in wow. essence, in essence, you're listening to a vinyl that has the same characteristics as a CD. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. we were like, no, and we went to great expense. And we 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 burned up a lot of BMG Records money uh, <laughs> doing doing the analog mastering for the for the record, so there was no digital transfer. So what you hear, you know, when you put on Down to the River and uh, and Bless Your Heart, there's a reason they sound like 1971 because yeah. all the processes were 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 true. And that really, it, it's got, it makes such a difference. It's so, it's warm. You can feel it. Uh, it's really, really warm. And it's got that. I'm stuff. glad you can tell. Oh, totally. Uh, you know, and, and I, I heard you recorded live uh, to do it analog. Uh, you know, I mean, that's, you, there's something about being in the same room, especially at Muscle Shoals. Uh, yeah, yeah. There, it, it really shows through. It really, really does. Yeah. Uh, that was special. Yeah. Um, Devin, you get, you're, are you good? I know we've gone over I got a, a little bit. I got about five. Okay. Okay. Um, yep. I'm curious. Um, your your dad's memoir, uh, My Cross to Bear, uh, have you read it? I mean, you lived it. Have you read it? Uh, I read it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, uh, I mean, you know it's... Uh, it's such a tough thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've heard all those stories all my life, you know? Right. And uh, it, it was very much um, a treat to have them all in one location, you know? That's how um, I felt, too. But, you know, I, I, I don't know. Other than that, it's, uh, you know, I don't know. It's his book. It's, you know. Yeah. Like he wrote it the way he wanted to write it. Uh, I I just don't know if I was super thrilled about all of it. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. I mean, you know, I would have been fair. It, I, it's I, fair because I I told him the same exact thing, you know, yeah. and uh, and that's all right. We always had a good relationship where we could be really uh, really honest with each other, you know. And that that is that's special, you know. It's so special. Yeah. Cool. And I think there was, I think there was some stuff in there that really deserved a deep dive, um, and then some stuff that you could have just left her right out of there. <laughs> um, but you know, it's that man's book, and he he could write whatever the hell he wants to write. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and you know, you're you're obviously very close to it. <laughs> you know, well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, that that that's great. You know, and I thought the same thing as a fan. Um, I thought, you know, I've heard th these different stories, and and you know, the this story and that story. But to have you know him tell it uh, was was really special for me as, as a fan. Uh, I appreciated it. Sure. Uh, yeah. Take me, you know, I've seen pictures of you. Take me through uh, a little bit of your ink. Uh, you have a lot of it. Um, yep. is, there, is there a piece that's, and it's great, um, is there a piece that's really special, closest to your heart? Probably, it's it's kind of tied into this um, This one. It's kind of a sleeve, but it's not fully connected. But this is the Orion constellation. When my son was born, my son's name is Orion Gregory. Um Nice. I got this this uh, Orion constellation at the place um, on <clears throat> Sunset in, in Los Angeles, where you know Motley Crue and and you know everybody, all the famous guys, been tatted. And we were playing a House of Blues show, and I was like, "Man, my son was just born. I'm gonna go get this tribute to to my son." And uh, you know, didn't call ahead, didn't make an appointment, didn't like use the Alma name, just. Went in there and said, hey, man, you know, I got an hour. I just want something tiny. He goes, yeah, come on in. And uh, he's about done with me. And he's like, you know, I did your dad about 10 years ago. And I didn't even tell him. I didn't tell him who, you know. Wow. So that was really cool. That one always means something to me. I mean, I, I got Layla, you know, the album cover, Layla. Yeah. Yeah. Um, awesome. I've got a big, big Buddha right here. Yeah, that's that, the one I see a lot, and it's uh, yeah. that's beautiful. That one's that one's important to me. That that one is kind of a, a daily reminder to, 
you know, be present, really. It's just kind of like, a, hey, be pre that's that's the whole thing. And and um, this is from when I was in Royal Southern Brotherhood. Yep. And this is uh, the city flag of Corpus Christi, my hometown, Texas. That's Curtis Mayfield. Yeah, sure is. Man, that is beautiful. Uh, that's a, a mantra that I've had for a long, long time. I got that one in Australia. Uh, that was the first one I ever got, the the rock and roll pyramid. Um, I got that um, when I was 17. My dad had to sign for it. My dad was like, hey, you're about to turn 18. What do you want for your birthday? And I was like, I, I want a tattoo. And uh, he put me and Elijah in a limo and went down to this tattoo place. And he had to sign since I was underage. Right. And uh, that was pretty wild. Uh, my little brother was 13 at the time and he wanted it at 13. <laughs> Crazy part was he already had one. <laughs> Cher had signed for him to get one at 13. Now it was teeny tiny. It was like a heart with a dagger in it or something tiny. Like, right. I think it was right here. Yeah. Don't so you have a cover? Doesn't she, huh? have album, doesn't she have an album cover or her, uh, Behind her name is something like that, maybe. Uh, yeah, like, maybe. The logo. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, that's... He, uh, wow. he, got to try, he got hot to try to get this tattoo. Um, he wanted the same one, and he called, called the house, and she wasn't there, and they were like, oh, she's she's gone for the afternoon. Let us get you... You know, this is before cell phones. And, and they're like, well, let us get the number for uh, where she is. And he calls, and she's at a tattoo parlor. <laughs> and he and he asks her if he can get it and she's like no you already got one that's enough and then uh and then actually for a minute my dad got this one uh which was really cool to share a tat with him um, yeah. but the guy kind of messed it up and my dad ended up getting it like kind of you know uh, uncovered. Yeah, like, kind of covered up and like reworked and retooled but yeah, man. Um, interesting stuff. You know, love the chat. I love it, man. I love it. I want to respect your time, Devin. It's been uh, you. time of my life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're hey, man. Thanks away. for having me. Thanks yeah. for promoting the music. And thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Australia at the end of the month, May and June, all through the Midwest and East Coast. May 31st at the Arcada in St. Charles, Illinois. And I, I hope to God I make it there. Uh, the yeah, please surprise. come back and say hello, please. Absolutely. Uh, one date in California at the beginning of July. Uh, will we see a West Coast leg? Uh, not this year. We're uh, we're you know uh, we're aiming for the revival to make a return to the West Coast. That's being booked right now. We'll see what happens, but um, you know, in due time for sure. Cool, cool. Uh, Japan at the end of July. It's all on Almond Bets band.com almondbetsband.com uh devin thank you so much uh, i hope we can do it again man Let, let's do it. love to all right thanks devin thank take you, care